Well, hey guys, Jonathan with you once again. Welcome back to today's short video, and I think today it might well be a short one because I think the battery on the camera is about to run out. So um, let's just jump in first to the housekeeping. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe bar button and also the notification bell. It makes a big difference. It helps people find the content and uh, leave something in the comments. If you like today's episode, if you've got questions about it, if it opens up some ideas or other topics you'd like me to explore, please put something in the comments because that's really helpful. Today, we are going to talk about obsession because I've been reading a book that's having a really big influence on me. I'm always lucky that way. I tend to get books just when I need them. So I came across a book called Endure, and I'll put a link to it in the show notes here. It's a book called Endure by Cameron Haynes, or Cam Haynes. If you're not familiar with him, if you've never heard of him, he is, without doubt, seen as the greatest living bow hunter in the world. So this guy goes into the most remote areas of wilderness, places that almost nobody else could get to. He'll spend like 10 days in there sometimes, stalking some of the biggest prey in the world, and then uh, hunting them with a bow with bow and arrow. Not only is he famous for his skill as a hunter, but he's very famous for his uh, incredible fitness regime. So he'll be often running a marathon before he goes to work. He has a full-time job working as a, uh, he works for a big utility company. So he's sort of a manager there, but he's off, often out working on um, utility infrastructure in uh, parts of Oregon in pretty remote areas. So this is a guy that has a wife, he's got kids, he's got a full-time day job, and then is also the world's greatest living bow hunter who's running marathons before work on a pretty regular basis. So here is the book. It's called Endure. I don't know if this is backwards on YouTube, but here it is, Endure. I really recommend it to you. Over the next couple of days, I want to go through some key themes in the book. But the first major theme that's come through is this concept of obsession. You see, Cam Haynes did not start as this world-famous super athlete. He was super average, small-town guy. He liked athletics and stuff, and he played a little bit of college football, but he was drinking professionally. He was, you know, a huge amount of drinking, partying, time-wasting, and his life was kind of going nowhere. He was working in a cardboard box factory, just crushing cardboard boxes, and that was it. And then one day a friend invites him to go bow hunting and he gets hooked and read the book. Don't read the book because you want to learn about bow hunting. Maybe you do. But read the book because he's also a really good writer. He His other great obsession was writing. So often you'll get a story from somebody. It's an interesting story about their life. But it's ghost written or the writer isn't that good. He's a really good writer. So he actually takes you really through his personal experience. And it's it's an opening journey of mediocrity, of average, of just going nowhere. And then the obsession kicks in. And he just begins to talk about the, the absolute nature of obsession. That he found this one thing that just lit him up and shaped the rest of his life. So it really got me thinking about two main points. One is, is this obsession, this, this thing that seems to grab a small number of people, is it literally something that most of the rest of us don't get to experience? And I don't think it is. I don't think God would create two classes of people, one group of people that have this phenomenal experience in life and just have this passion and an obsession and they do all this incredible stuff and then the rest of us just get to do jobs we hate and lives that we don't really enjoy. I think what's far more likely is that for complex reasons, we surrender the possibility of finding and doing things that we are deeply obsessive and passionate about. And when you hear this word obsessive, it can sound like negative, right? It can sound like, well, is it good to have an obsession? What I'm taking from the book and from my own life is that obsessions tend to light you up. Now, I'm talking about positive obsessions. I'm not talking about evil things or dark things. I'm talking about obsessions that really bring us alive and cause us to become better, harder working, more committed, more diligent, more sacrificial. Because when we do those things, we tend to light up people around us. See, that's why this book is having a big impact on me because it's somebody's, his obsession, his passion resonates with me and it makes me want to press more deeply into the things that I'm obsessive and passionate about. So my point is that when you find an obsession and when you read about it, it helps you to become a better person and it encourages the people around you and people get inspired by your story, by your journey. 
So I think it is possible that we all have them. I think it's a tragedy that we don't live them or we give up on them for complex reasons. We can tell ourselves a lot of stories about why we can't do it. You know, we can say, well, I've got to be responsible. Or I've got to do this. Well, he's being responsible. He's working a pretty basic day job. He's not like a you know, Wall Street entrepreneur. He works a pretty basic job. He's a hardworking guy. But his obsession outside of it has become incredibly important for him and it's you know become obviously financially successful for him. So that's the first part is that the obsession I think is there. We all have it. So I want to encourage you before the battery runs out to go looking for it. To So what it did for me was it began to make me ask the question, what am I truly obsessive about? What am I deeply passionate about? What are the things that that really I could give my life to? So long story short, I spent a few days thinking about it just in the last, you know, since I started reading the book. And it was a great process for me to go back through. I've been training for some ultra marathons again now. So I'm running like an idiot, like, you know, I'm doing back to doing two half marathons and a marathon a week. So I'm starting to get time to think. And I, I really began to think, what do I really obsessive about? And it took me a few days to get back to it. But the answer is that I... I'm just so passionate and obsessive about personal development and growth and improvement in my own life because I've got lots of flaws, lots of failures, lots of things that I want to change still, and because I just love doing it for other people. The minute I get around somebody and get a chance to talk about what I'm passionate about, what I want to encourage them about, what I want to share with them, I just come alive. And so this really helped me to say to myself, This is what I want to keep doing for the rest of my life and I want to get better at it. And that's part of what he's talking about here is his relentless obsession with getting better and better. You know, he's always in the gym. He's always training. He's running. He's keeping his family together as well. So I don't think he's he's harming anybody like he's not obsessively damaging his relationships. But his commitment to getting better and better and better and better inspired me. You know, I was really inspired by it. So look, I want to wrap up. And I want to say to you, go check out the show notes, get yourself a copy, read it with an open heart and open mind, not in terms of improving your bow hunting skills. Maybe you do bow hunt, but you probably don't. But read it from somebody who was just treading water in life and then found something that really moved them and then they just took it to the full degree. I'm inspired by it. I just really want to try and take these lessons and apply them in my own life, which means for me just kind of getting up each day going, right, Jonathan, are you improving in some small way? Are you reading something? Are you doing something? Are you removing a habit? In the next few days, I've got some videos about things that I'm doing at the moment that are going to be encouraging for you, changes you can make. You know, somebody emailed me during the week and said, well, what about, you know, just being at peace with who where you are in life and what God's doing and, you know, just accepting where you are? And I get that. There's a real paradox here. There's actually, these things can exist together intention yes i'm obsessive yes i do a lot of crazy stuff and so does he but i also do often just enjoy what i have like i love my kids and karen and you know sitting here in the house like you know we've got this amazing view out the front here over the mountains like yeah i still actually can do both i can still enjoy and accept and be grateful for exactly where i am but I'm still trying to keep going forward. I I just think it's the nature of the universe. I think the universe is constantly moving. It's in motion. It's expanding. It's growing and developing and changing. And that's why I want to keep being obsessive. That's why I want to keep trying and keep improving and keep just tweaking stuff and encouraging you to do the same. All right, so there was more I wanted to say, but tomorrow I want to talk about his take on excuses and the crutches that we use in life so please tune in tomorrow um if you're not getting the daily emails i'll try and remember to put we'll just go into the show notes here and grab the um the free access to my book because that'll put you on the daily email list and so you're going to get these episodes each morning um tomorrow we're going to talk about yeah these crutches and excuses that we use i think there's he's got some good stuff on that you know he also talks about what we're prepared to sacrifice i think he makes a great point with that that if you have an obsession you begin to learn to sacrifice a bunch of things in pursuit of that obsession i think that's a really good point he gave up like alcohol he gave up all these destructive things nothing major like nothing like he was out i mean he was drink driving he was doing all sorts of stuff and he slowly just gave these things away and sacrificed them in pursuit of the obsession 
So often knowing what we are deeply committed to, what we're deeply passionate about, then helps us. It makes it easier to let go of the things that are holding us back. And I've got some stuff coming out on that next few days. I'm really pumped. The next week or so, I've got a whole bunch of episodes coming out. A lot of uh, listener, viewer questions I'm going to answer. Um, and uh, I'm going to be on a road trip. I'm doing a 4,500 kilometer motorbike trip with my son on the back. So I'm going to be doing videos on the road, which I really want you to tune in. So make sure you've subscribed because... I'm going to do some really cool videos um, on this motorbike trip, which I hope will encourage you as well. So, look, that's it from me. I love this book. I read so much. I read a huge amount. But this has been really, really, really cool. So go and get a copy or get the audio version. And, um, and do not accept that you do not have a great obsession. Does not mean that it's your career? Not necessarily, because his career is not really bow hunting. His career is working as a manager in a utility company. That's his career. But his obsession is much, much bigger than his career. So for you, it could be food, music, architecture, who knows? You know, in the podcast version of this, so if you go in the notes here, there'll be a link to the podcast. I've done a longer podcast on this. I often go deeper in the podcast. I talk about... On Netflix, there's a series called Chef's Table. And that Chef's Table series interviews and does documentaries on the world's greatest chefs. And you just meet these amazing men and women. There's one lady called Christina Tosi. She's the world's best, basically, dessert and pastry lady. And my little daughter is just obsessed with us. She just, my, my daughter loves to bake and she's just watched Christina Tosi and she's just so into it. But I get pumped because, like, I'm not into baking, but I watch this amazing woman. She's a vibrant, alive, passionate, you know, joyful person who's obsessed with one thing, desserts. That's it. She's just making desserts. She's not obsessed with bow hunting. So you can see this huge range of diversity of interests and obsessions that God creates us with, right? And I think God, God takes a great deal of joy in seeing us grow and develop in these areas in life. Because I know as a father, when I see my kids with their interests and obsessions, you get behind them, right? Like you kind of get behind them and you get pumped when you see your kids doing cool stuff. So I think that's how God looks at us and I think that's how you've been created. So be encouraged. You have my permission to go looking for your great obsession. But I'll finish up now. We got through with the battery, huh? That's good news. So yeah, please make sure you've subscribed. Leave a comment. Hit the notification bell. And um and go and check out the notes here because all the stuff's there, the podcast, everything else. So God bless you, everybody. I've enjoyed this. I've enjoyed this book. I've got a, a few chapters to go. I'm excited about I'm going to take this on the motorbike trip. But God bless you, everybody. My name is Jonathan Doyle. This has been The Daily Message. You and I are going to talk again tomorrow.